Greater Good Radio. Connect, learn, heal, and grow. When I got arrested, it hit the news. I was famous enough that it hit all the print news. And like 10 days later, I find out the Osaka guy who was running Osaka, he was a Yakuza. He went and called all the other gyms and said, let's disassociate with Ensign because he's now a bad name. And you know, in Japan, once you get arrested and you get a bad name, you're pretty much stigmatized as a bad person for at least seven years. Then I guess this guy that was running the Osaka gym, he felt that, oh, I am pretty much have a bad name. So he wanted to disassociate. You know, that's the kind of times when people should show your loyalty. When you're down and out, that's when the good friends will stand by you. So yeah, that guy did that and he tried to pull out and he came to visit me in jail and then I just played it off like, you know, he told me that the people in the gym, which I, I knew a lot of the members in the gym, the parents and stuff, and he said that they don't want to associate with me anymore. So I told him, well, I'm gonna, when I get out, I'm going to find out the truth. But you and, already knew the truth. Yeah, I kind of knew because he's done that to me before. He's lied to me before about another guy. And when I did get out, I found out that it wasn't true. And the only reason why he did that was because I was close to K-1 and he wanted to have his fighters fighting K-1. And when I had got arrested, he knew K-1 would pull away from me and I would lose that connection. So he still wanted to continue that connection by showing K-1 that we're no longer with Ensign. And when I got out, I was uh, not very happy. He hid and hid and ran. And, you know, every time people do that to me, I have this knack of running into him. And so oh, one just day, by chance, kind Just by chance. So, yeah. you know, one day one of my good friends from Hawaii come, came up and we went to Osaka to go out, party and stuff. We were walking out all happy with some numbers and walking out. And my friend Darren turns on and looks at me like, oh, Ensign. I'm like, what? He, he's like, he looked, had a whole different change. Like, what? Wow, the mood's gone. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And he goes, look. And I said, what? <laughs> he said, look. And that guy was standing right in front of me. You know, I, was, I remember his all his gold chains going down. And I just grabbed him by the shirt, pulled him to me. And I, I know a couple of the gold chains broke. Oh, he didn't see you? I think he did, but he didn't know what to do. He froze. Oh. And, you know, we had this big, in the middle of Osaka where they have all the drinking stuff. And the underworld has a super fast grapevine. Drag, as I'm dragging him to the streets, the, the grapevine's going crazy. So he wasn't trying to fight? Nah, he was just so scared. He, well, he, a lot of times they know they did wrong. Mm-hmm. And I oh, think so at the time, shame, too, yeah. I had that reputation where if he fought back, it'd get worse. I mean, you're probably going like, oh, but he's Yakuza. That was one of the things that I didn't care. But I was mean, he like lower level kind? His dad was super high. Oh. And he knew a guy in the Yamaguchi Gumi. It was called, there was a faction called the Yamaken. The guy that he knew that actually introduced me to was called Makino. And he is super powerful. When I run myself, it doesn't matter who you are or what you do. It's right and wrong. Mm-hmm. And he was wrong. So I didn't feel like I had needed to fear anything. And the guy that we were with got a hold of the grapevine. Mm-hmm. And so we were st- we started <laughs> moving to different VIP rooms in the hostess clubs. Oh, And then so we didn't stay too long because the grapevine would tell them where they are. We moved to another one. And then, you know, of course, for me... It was about either... Like negotiating to apologize or something. No, negotiating to get a repercussion from him. Make him serve the repercussions of what he did. And of course, one of the possibilities is a financial payment, uh-huh. which would be always be nice. And you can't demand the financial payment. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. then you're extorting Yakuza. Yeah, yeah, And the families wouldn't be too happy about it. Mm-hmm. So my way was that I'm a fighter. To apologize to me, you come work for me. And my work is what's sparring, so... Pretty much, I could beat them up every day, <laughs> and they don't want to do that. And we finally got it to a point where I, I told him to cancel all his appointments for the next month because he's coming home with me, and he's going to be a sparring partner. So I was planning to bring him back and beat him up every day. Mm-hmm. And he knew what was happening, and he <laughs> I think his first offer was $3,000. And so I pretty much laughed at that. So I told him he had three choices. He had one choice. He could work for me for a month. The second choice was he could leave something real important on the table. And he's just looking at his Rolex. And I said, no, I to, I to, I'm like the tip of your nose or earlobe. I mean, something Oh, really like how important. they really do them, like when yeah, they chop the finger yeah, kind? Yeah, And of course, he doesn't want to do that. And his third option was, I told him that there's three people that I hate. You kill one of them for me. And he's such a pussy. He would not do that. And I knew that. That's why I threw that out. And he goes, okay, who? You're such a fucking liar man you know so i I caught him on that he of course he was lying and when he realized how serious it was 
he came out with a bigger figure. So the, the figure he finally came out was 30000 You know, sometimes when these guys can get $30,000 wrapped in banknotes in the middle of the night. He got $30,000 in 20 minutes, and that was done. If you resonate with Greater Good Radio, please join our community at www.greatergoodradio.com where you can get access to exclusive content and offerings. Hope to see you soon.